Rogue Company is a new objective-based shooter from High res Studios. The game takes a lot of aspects from both Overwatch and CSGO and delivers a fun, fast-paced, objective-based team shooter. Now, it seems a lot of words just to describe what type of game it is, but let me explain myself a little bit. The reason I say that this game borrows a lot from Overwatch is because there's rogues, which are essentially the heroes. You can pick from any of the rogues at the start of the match, just no duplicates. Each rogue is unique in their own right. They have a different look, playstyle, weapons, equipment, and abilities. There's support characters like Saint or Dallas, Dallas being able to ping enemies through walls with his ultimate, while Saint can revive players from anywhere on the map with his drone. Or you have the like heavy attackers like Dima, who has a clustered grenade launcher. Each rogue has their own unique abilities, and this lets you play the kind of the way you want, if you want to be a quick attacker, or if you want to play back and be more of a support. Each of the rogues can pick between one of two primary weapons. If you find any weapons on the ground during the match, you can of course pick those up, but each character can only pick between one of two at the start of a match. The reason that this game borrows some from CSGO is because there's a buy mechanic at the start of each round. You can get more money from eliminating enemies, winning rounds, assists, and just doing more things for the objective. The more money you get, the more stuff you can buy. Each rogue has their set of perks that you can purchase. Some of them are shared between rogues, but not all of them are the same throughout every single class. You can buy upgrades for your weapons, upgrades to your equipment, and just make your character stronger and better throughout the match. At the start of each match, the first round will have everyone playing with just a pistol or a melee weapon if they choose to purchase that right off the bat. So pretty much everyone's on a pretty even playing field throughout the first round, only using sidearms. As the match goes on, characters will get progressively stronger with more perks, equipment, and more abilities that you're going to have to watch out for. You can only change your character once a game, and that's during halftime. So once you pick a rogue at the start of a match, you're locked in until the halfway point when you switch sides. Now it borrows a lot from Overwatch and CSGO because it's objective based. You want to plant a bomb and the enemy team wants to defuse it, or vice versa depending on what side you're on at the start of a match. The game is very competitive in that right. It's a 4v4 third person shooter. While some weapons do have ADS options and where it will actually go first person, most of the weapons in the game will still just have the over the shoulder view. Overall, I think the game's quite enjoyable. The demolition mode is basically their standard competitive mode, while strikeout is more like a hardpoint type thing. Capture an objective and kill enemies in order to kind of decrease their lives throughout the match. Demolition is a fun, competitive mode, and this is one of those games where you're going to really benefit from good communication, so playing with a competent team is almost a must. Much like in all these competitive type games, if you're not playing with your friends and you don't have people on the team that are talkative, it's going to be a little bit more difficult than if you had a full team of people you knew. But that is the case with a lot of these objective-based shooters. Games like Siege, Overwatch, CSGO, if you have a competent team that is communicative, then it's going to be a lot easier. You're going to be able to spend a lot more information and help your team out. The game is in closed beta, but you are able to purchase access via their packs. And the game already does have some in-game currency that you could purchase if you do so choose. You also do earn some credits through the in-game, so by playing more, you'll be able to unlock more rogues if you haven't already purchased the additions that give you access to all of them. There's currently 13 rogues in the game, and like I said, they're all unique in their own right, which each having different abilities and equipment loadouts. They all feel unique, and they all bring something to the table. I've tried to use a different one every game just to get a feel for all of them, and I gotta say, they're all pretty damn viable. There's none that I would say are completely useless. Each rogue does have a purpose, so the game isn't going to be lopsided if you pick one certain character. The game has lots of features which I enjoy, and so far with the closed beta, I haven't noticed any major glitches. Some problems with the lobbies, but in terms of in-game, mostly everything has been quite fine. There's been a couple instances where I'm being shot at and the guy's character is not looking at me at all, but besides that, I haven't found anything major that has just broken the game for me. Overall, I think it's pretty well polished. There's a few things that could be changed in terms of matchmaking with the party and this and that, because sometimes the notifications just don't stop or people just leave the lobby for whatever reason because it times out or something. I'd say that Rogue Company is a shooter that would probably be worth your time. It's a lot of fun, and I've been enjoying every moment I've been playing it. 
like I said, it's a lot more fun when you have a full team with you, so playing solo might get a little frustrating, but I still do think it is a very fun game to play. Something that I can see myself playing for quite some time. It doesn't seem like one of those shooters that I'll play for a couple months and then just stop. It is quite engaging, and there's a lot to work towards. And especially if you're playing with a competent team, it can be really fun to rise through the ranks and just play in that competitive mode. I can't wait to see what more that High res brings to the table with this game in the future, but I guess we'll just be seeing what happens when the game comes out for a full 1.0 release. Overall, I'd say Rogue Company is probably worth your time. It's a 4v4 game, so you don't really need a ton of friends to be playing with you. You got you and three others, and boom, you got a full team. You don't need a 5v5 or 6v6. So it's pretty small teams, and the rounds are pretty quick. You just don't want to play the game like it's COD. It's not that fast-paced where you need to run and gun. It's really tactical. You need to think about your moves and think about when to use your equipment and your ultimates and everything in between. You can revive teammates if they go down, but the bleed-out time is pretty quick, so you're going to want to get to them real soon or else they'll die. Overall, I'd say Rogue Company is worth your time. It's a game I can see myself playing for quite some time in the future. Hopefully hi res can keep supporting this game and keep it going for quite some time. Have you guys played Rogue Company? What do you think of it? I know it's not super in-depth, but it's me just trying to get out a basic review and what I think of the game. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates!